Hi friends and welcome. Today we're going to take you to one of the most beautiful places in the world and we are not exaggerating. It's the central upper peninsula of Michigan, the Munising area. There are the most incredible forests, waterfalls, beaches, vistas. It has it all. And it doesn't really matter if you're going by car, by boat, by RV, whether you're staying in a cabin or uh, in an RV. However you get there, uh, we're going to give you some tips and tricks to make your trip there as fun, as exciting, and as enjoyable as possible. Welcome to Living Phase 2. As a reminder, today we are in the central upper peninsula of Michigan. Uh, it's the Munising and Marquette area. Uh, it's right on the shoreline of Lake Superior. And if you haven't seen our video of crossing over into the UP or how to drive here, be sure to check that out. We drove initially across the Mackinac Bridge to Sault Ste. Marie, and now we're driving uh, west across the Upper Peninsula, and we're stopping about halfway. It's about two and a half hours from Sault Ste. Marie over to this area that we're at now. Well, while we're driving over there, we made our first stop. Our first stop is to Quaminon Falls, and there's um, the little easy trick of how to pronounce it. Right, because we get we hear all the time, well, how do you say this? In fact, we'll write it here on the screen so that you can see it. You can see it, see it on my t-shirt. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it, it rhymes with phenomenon. So if you think of phenomenon, it's to Quaminon. That's right, and my favorite way to remember it is from you know, many, many, many years ago, the Muppet Show, they used to have, <laughs> you know, animals sing this song called Monomenon, and here it is. Monomenon. So as you can see, you simply sing along, and instead of Monomena, you say Tequamanon. Say it. Tequamanon. <laughs> Tequamanon. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's just an easy way. You'll never forget how to say Tequamanon Falls that's now. That's right. That so, is right. That's so, right. Tequamanon Falls are one of the largest falls. Well, they are the largest falls in Michigan, and they're one of the largest falls in the eastern uh, portion of North America. They have a brown color to them that's due to all the tannins that are leached from the trees. Kind of gives it a root beer color, brownish mm -hmm. color. Right. And uh, so hence the nickname, Root Beer Falls. Right, but they're not dirty, there's no, no. pollution. That, that may be the first uh, things that people think about. It's really just from the tannins leaching out of all the trees. Correct. So, And really, it's a very easy visit. It, uh, you can, in fact, park your RV there, you can park your car. Um, for the fall for the falls and it's only a short walk it's all paved in fact they've made an extreme effort to make this uh, very very accessible be it uh, whether you have mobility issues a wheelchair a mobility scooter um, or you're just um, you know not looking to go on a six mile hike or something mm -hmm. this is a very easy falls to go see right it's mm -hmm. actually divided into two falls the upper falls and the lower falls and we recommend that you park down at the lower falls and to visit that area first it's mm -hmm. a beautiful area uh, if the weather's nice you can wear your swimsuit and even get into the falls mm -hmm. that's right we saw some people doing that mm -hmm. and there's plenty there of course you have the obligatory gift shop but they they even have a barbecue place a brewery I mean they have all kinds of things right. uh, at, at the parking lot area before you walk up to the falls so it's a little touristy but it also makes for a, um, a great stop if you just want to see one of the most beautiful waterfalls really in the world mm -hmm. it, it's gorgeous you can see from all the video we're showing you here um, a couple notes if you are taking an RV um, the RV campground you want to stay near the falls I just want to double check this it's um, um, the Lower Falls Campground. There is one called um, that's that's listed as the River Rivermouth Campground. You don't want that one. That's actually on the. I mean, it may be a nice RV park, but it's on the right on the shoreline of Lake Superior. It's quite a ways from the falls. But the Lower Falls Campground uh, is actually a very nice campground. So that would be the one you'd want to pick. Um, and the second thing uh, for them to see on this way over to Munising is Whitefish Point, and that has the shipwreck museum um, that, that shows a lot of the large shipwrecks, including uh, the the latest one, which was the Edmund Fitzgerald. Really, the last one. The yeah. last one, yes, right. um, Edmund mm -hmm. Fitzgerald. And so, if you're familiar with Gordon Lightfoot and his song, and later that night when his lights went out of sight, came the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. 
you, you will see the actual bell from the ship there at the museum. Right, as they've done some salvaging on it. It, it really is quite fascinating. Um, that whole area of Lake Superior was just hundreds of shipwrecks. It's yeah. amazingly treacherous. And the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald is one that kind of, uh, in the, it really kind of caused a lot of safety issues and things to go into place. And there hasn't been a major shipwreck uh, on Lake Superior in that area since that time, right. since that time. And there's other things to see in the area of the museum. You can tour the lighthouse, which was really good. You could see what it mm -hmm. was like to be a lighthouse keeper back in the day. Yeah, it's all kind of included in the one ticket, uh, the lighthouse, the shipwreck museum, everything. And you know, you might think, oh, I'm not really into ships, but it truly was fascinating. Was. I enjoyed it very much. And you get to see Whitefish Point, um, um, which in the song, you know, you hear, uh, if they'd have made Whitefish Bay, you know, the, and put 15 more miles behind her. The searchers all say they'd have made Whitefish Bay if they'd put 15 more miles behind her. Uh, that's from the song, and that's the point. Whitefish Point com comes around, and that would have protected the ship if they'd have made it there. Um, so you get that beautiful view out on Lake Superior at Whitefish Point. If you're in an RV, I do want to give you a pro tip, and that is to make your reservations well in advance. Remember, we're up north here, and so summer is their busy season, and the RV parks do fill up. So I want you to be aware of that and to make those reservations early. And there's some amazing RV parks there up there, right on Lake Superior, in beautiful. the forest. Yeah, you, you won't get a better view. Right. And as far as driving up there, it's a, really, the roads are good. It's an easy drive. Many of the roads are two lane, but there's a lot of passing areas on those roads. So it really makes for an easy drive. Right. It's it's uh, one of the better areas to go to if you're, mm -hmm. in, and whether you're in a car or RV, it, really driving around the Upper Peninsula was very easy. It really was. In Munising, we stayed at a private cabin. However, that uh, particular cabin or set of cabins is changing hands. It's getting new owners. So we're only not going to discuss it because we don't really know what it's going to be like once it changes hands. However, that is a great way to stay in this area, either a private cabin or um, if you're not in an RV. There's lots of hotels too, but we really like that cabin experience out in the woods. Mm -hmm. Well, the number one thing to see in Munising, in this area of the world, is Picture Rocks National Lakeshore. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. It's just gorgeous. It's 42 miles of lakeshore on Lake Superior that is all sandstone sculpture and colors and striations and it, it's just absolutely gorgeous and we're showing you some pictures here but it's it, the pictures don't do it justice they don't They're right and so there are four different ways for you to see the pictured rocks national lakeshore out of munising and the first is one we did we did we did a cruise where uh a person took us out on a, on a little cruise boat. It was one of those that has the two, two decks, the upper deck and the lower deck. So pro tip, book early and also arrive early. You want to arrive about an hour before you board at your boarding time just because they're going to board from the top of the boat down to the bottom to then to the lower uh, portion. And you want to get up on the upper deck of the boat you also want to get an outside seat so you can see things really well right right so you, you, that's how people get on the boat and they sit down from the top outside moving in and then to mm -hmm. the bottom and so get there early so you get that and like nancy mentioned this goes across the board in the Upper Peninsula. Remember, the entire Upper Peninsula of Michigan only has like 300,000 people, and their population explodes with tourists in the summer. Mm -hmm. And so everything, there's limited availability. So if you think you're going to go, that's part of the reason why we're releasing this video in the fall. And, <laughs> and then plan now. <laughs> plan now for things that you're going to do next summer. Um, well, another way that you can go see the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore is they have kayak excursions. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually, they take you out on a boat. They load all the kayaks. It's actually quite amazing. They load the kayaks up into the boat on these slots. They haul them out of the water. And when they put them back in the water at the lakeshore, um, they have a little boarding area that you sit in your kayak and then you take off and you kayak up and down the the lakeshore it, it's it's really a way to get up close and personal with the the national lakeshore one disadvantage of this versus the cruise is you don't see quite as much no you just you couldn't paddle that far 42 in miles the, in the amount of time that, <laughs> right. that you have are given there plus on the cruise they give you a nice um a description of what the different rock formations are and and 
different areas that you're seeing. Right. Now, a third way to see it is to rent your own boat. Mm -hmm. um, you can rent a pontoon boat or other boats and just tool up and down the, the National Lakeshore. You can grab a picnic lunch in your pontoon boat mm -hmm. and just really have a great time doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, like Nancy said, you don't get the the uh, explanation or the guide and all that, but it's a really, really nice way to spend a day. But this is another one of those that there's limited pontoons and boat rentals available each day. And we looked um, when we were starting to go up there and months in advance, uh, all the boats were reserved. So again, if you're thinking about um, a trip to the UP in the summer, I know we're saying it quite a bit, but uh, reserve early and reserve in advance. And obviously that would be your most expensive way to tour picture rocks yes. as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's not cheap, but it's uh, it can make for a really, really great day. Um, now the fourth way is the second way we did it, yes. and this one is uh, maybe one that's going to take a little bit more exertion on your part, and that is? Yeah, that is hiking. And so first off, friends, if you haven't seen our hiking video, please uh, take a look. We'll link that in the description below so you know what things you need to take when you're going hiking to be safe. Yeah, and this one, we're not kidding. Um, the, it's listed on the map when you start uh, to move or to, to do the hike. It's called the Chapel Falls Hike and mm -hmm. Chapel Beach hike. It's listed as being eight miles. Well, I brought my GPS with me and we mapped the whole thing and it was almost 13 miles that we did in it one day. It was a long walk. <laughs> it was a long walk. but And it was a hike it went up because the hike takes you up to the top of Pictured Rocks. That's over 200 feet above the lake shore. That's right. But that said, the 13 miles to me was 100% worth it. The oh, things we saw, the beauty, and you really talk about getting up close and personal with the National Lakeshore and Lake Superior. You're right there. You're walking along the tops of the cliffs. You get to see uh, perspectives and vistas that you can never really see from the boats or from even kayaks or anything of that nature. Just incredible. Uh, plus really the waterfalls was. along mm -hmm. the way, like Chapel Falls, Mosquito Falls, <laughs> um, and Chapel Beach, where we stopped you know, halfway on our hike, and uh, that's where we had lunch and went for a swim. Um, um, if you're up for a very long day um, and you go very prepared, you know, we're not, this is one of those cases where our hiking video didn't go overboard. We really recommend you take all that with you. Um, the Chapel Beach, Chapel Falls hike is absolutely worth it, it if you're up stunning. for it. Pro tip friends, be sure to take a picture of the map trailhead before you start on your trail and that will really help you out with where you're at as you're doing your hiking because like we said, it, it uh, was quite deceptive on uh, the distance that we actually walked. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and really, that goes for any time you take a hike. Um, it will usually, especially if it's a, a set hike, um, you know, you'll, uh, you'll have a trail marker at the beginning that'll have a map. Just take a quick picture with your phone, and then you've got it with you all day. Absolutely. So after we uh, went on our... Um, little hike <laughs> we went back to our uh we went back to our cabin for some much needed ibuprofen and old fashions i think <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you're finding these videos helpful, lots of tips and tricks, uh, we always ask that you just hit that like button and uh, subscribe to our channel. We're going to have many, many more videos going around to the most beautiful places in the world here as we're trying to live our best uh, empty nest full life here in phase two. So if you would, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We've got many more videos like this coming. We appreciate you, friends. Thank you. Well, on to the next uh, area here. So after we recovered from that 13 mile <laughs> hike, uh, the next day we actually spent some time in the car driving around and seeing lots of the beautiful waterfalls in uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. This is actually why a lot of people come to the Upper Peninsula. So some of the falls that we got to see were Wagner Falls, Munising Falls, Autrain Falls, Alger Falls, Horseshoe Falls and others. It was quite a day. Right, we're gonna put a link in the description. There's actually great um, websites that show you all the falls, maps to them, directions, mm -hmm. so that you can see all these amazing falls. And, and uh, you know, you're seeing many of the pictures here as we're talking. Um, honestly, that, that you just can't get enough. The waterfalls in the Upper Peninsula are just, just absolutely gorgeous. On our final day, we broke out the ATVs and we went probably 
40, 50 miles. At this. least. Oh yeah, at least. Yeah. And good trails, um, easy to access right from cabins, hotels. And the nice thing, uh, they're very ATV friendly up in the UP. You can uh, ride right into town. You can get gas, you can eat, you can shop, all of those things. But one of the neat things right off one of the ATV trails that we found was an area called Lock and Land. Lock and Land, that right. It's a lot of fun. It's it was... a big sculpture mm -hmm. park. Yeah. They're metal sculptures that a man named Tom Lock Lockinen. Yeah, yeah. Lockinen. Lockinen. <laughs> Lockinen. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, for butchering your name. But yeah, it, it's uh, he really started this as, as kind of therapy, like a therapeutic um, hobby. Mm -hmm. And now he's got something like over 120 massive metal sculptures. If, if you're riding in your car, you can actually drive your car all the way through the exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, we were on ATVs and rode our ATVs through. We, we ended up going there a second time and we walked through some of it and looked mm -hmm. up close to some of the sculptures you can see some of them here i would not take an rv just because some of the turns are quite sharp so i would think that'd be a little bit tricky you could park and then walk right it. he has a very large parking mm -hmm. lot you can park your rv and then walk through even as a pavilion you can have lunch you can yeah. it is a Bathrooms, whole area yeah and and all of it's free. Now he does ask, he's got places where you can drop donations in uh, so he can continue this hobby of his. Um, but yeah, it's it's all on a donation basis and it's a great thing to uh, to go visit. So whether you're on a snowmobile, an RV, or um, a car, or an ATV, um, Lock and Land's worth a stop. Uh, about halfway between uh, Munising and uh, Marquette is where it's located, uh, just right off the road. Well, that's kind of our venture yeah. in the Munising area. Now on to the Kinawa Peninsula. That's right. Um, it's We're going to go to the Copper Harbor area mm -hmm. and you'll see this beautiful area, one of the remote, most remote areas in the U.S. actually, mm -hmm. way up there sticking out into Lake Superior and that'll be in our next video. More beautiful waterfalls, friends. Thank you for watching and have a great living phase today.